Hello everyone, my name is Wendy. In this GIMP tutorial, we will demonstrate how to create a paper cutout text effect. To do this, we will use a filter called Zack Effect. This powerful filter creates all the additional features for us. It will create a layer for the highlights with a layer mask attached, a layer for the drop shadow, and also a layer fine outline around some parts of the text. I will be using Windows and GIMP 2.10.28. So let's get started. First I'll open a new document. I'll leave all the settings that I used for this YouTube thumbnail, which is 1280 by 720 pixels. Then I'll open the advanced options. I'll leave the resolution at 300 pixels, and in filled with, I'll just leave it as it is, as I'll change the color in the next step. So just press OK. Come over to the foreground color box, and click on the color box to open the color selector. I have prepared the colors in advance. If you would like to copy the background color, the HTML notation is 666666. Then click in the color box, hold the left mouse button down, and drag the color over to the layer. Then release the mouse button, and the color is applied to the layer. Now we're going to create a new layer. So drop down to the menu below, and click on the first button to create a new layer. In the dialog, I'll change the name to Top Color. Don't worry about the fill width, as we're going to change the color in the next step, so just press OK. Now come back over to the color selector. This time the HTML notation is CB5E43. Then I'll click hold and drag the color over to the layer, and release the mouse. We can close the color selector now. Now we're going to create some text, so come over to the toolbox, and click on the text tool icon. I was experimenting earlier with the fonts, and decided to go for one of the Barlow's condensed fonts for this effect. I'll use capital letters, as I think it makes the effect look more interesting. I set the size to 300 pixels. You can use any word for your text, however for the purpose of this video, I'll type cut out. Come back over to the settings panel. Click on the small a or the small image. And now you can scroll through all the list and see if you can find another bold font that you like. I think I'll change mine. I'm going to go for the Barlow's Condensed Ultra Bold Condensed. I like that one. Now make sure the anti-aliasing is enabled and the indent line and letter spacing are all set to zero. Next select the Move tool to deselect the text tool. I'm going to reposition the text so it's in the center of the canvas. First of all, this yellow and black line is the layer boundary. We can crop the boundary to the actual content size. So to do this, come up to the Layers menu and select Crop to Content. To center the text in the middle of the canvas, we'll use a very useful tool. That's called the Alignment tool. Next, come up to the Toolbox and right-click on the Move tool and from the Group menu, press Alignment. Or you can press Q on the keyboard. First, activate the selection. So click on the text. When the tool is activated, four tiny squares appear in the corners of the boundary line. Now come over to the tool settings, and under alignment, make sure relative is set to selection. If not, you can select it from the drop down menu. We'll press the two middle buttons. The first one is to align the center of the target. This will align the center point of the text object to the vertical middle line of the canvas. Next, click on the button below the previous one. This will align the middle of the target, and this will align the center point of the text object to the horizontal middle line of the canvas. Then switch back to the Move tool, or just press M on the keyboard. Come over to the Layers panel. Right-click on the layer, then from the menu, select Alpha to Selection. Next, click on the small eye-shaped icon to turn off the visibility of the text. We only need the selection, however, I'm going to keep this layer as a backup, just in case I'd like to do some variations to the work a bit later on, so I'll just click hold and drag it below. Click on the top orange layer to select it. With the selection still activated, place the cursor over the canvas, right click in front of the menu, go to edit, and select clear, or just hit delete on the keyboard. Come back over to the layers panel. I'm going to turn on and off the visibility of the background layer a minute, just to make sure the text was deleted. That's good. 
I can see the checkerboard background. This represents the transparent area or the alpha channel. Make sure the orange top layer is still the active layer. Before we move on, we have to deselect the selection. So right click and from the menu, go to select and choose none. Now we can add the filter. Come up to the filter menu, go to light and shadow, and then scroll right down to the bottom, then click on Zack Effect. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the Zack Effect filter does all the work. It will create a couple of additional layers. One is for the highlights with a layer mask attached. Another is for the drop shadow. Also, some thin highlighted outlines are added to some edges of the text. You can adjust all of these values here in the settings. I'll leave all the default values as I'm happy with the results. However, I would like to change the highlight color. By default, it's set to white. I'll click in the color box to open the Script Foo color selector. I prepared the color in advance, so if you'd like to follow along, the HTML notation is FDEADA, then press OK. OK, just one more thing. Make sure the Keep Selection option is unchecked. Now press OK. This process should only take a few seconds, depending on your computer. This looks really good. There is a subtle highlight, a soft drop shadow with a Gaussian blur, and a thin highlighted edge. Come over to the Layers panel. All the hard work is done. The top layer is the highlights with the layer mask attached. Below that is the drop shadow with the Gaussian blur. You can fine tweak these layers a little more if you like. I'm going to lower the opacity to about 80 or 85 on my highlight layer. You can also lower the opacity on the drop shadow layer if you want to. I like the way the shadow looks, so I won't adjust the opacity. I'm going to right click and from the menu select New from Visible. This option creates a new layer from what you can see on the canvas. I'm happy with the end results. All you have to do is export out as a JPEG or a PNG file. If you've enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing so you don't miss any upcoming videos from this channel. Thank you. I'll wrap up here. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Enjoy.